Hello and welcome to the presentation on specific latent heat. Uh, pause the video and take a moment to read the learning objectives. <coughs> okay, so first let's go through some descriptions of phase changes. When we go from a solid to a liquid, that's called melting, so like when ice melts. When we go from a liquid to a solid, the other way around, that can be called freezing or fusion. When we go from a liquid to a gas, it can be called vaporization, which includes boiling and evaporation. Going from gas to liquid is called condensation, and going from a solid to a gas is called sublimation. Okay, let's have a look at an example of some changes of state. Take one kilogram of a solid and heat it with one candle at a time and measure the temperature. Continue doing this until you have a gas. Okay, so here's my block of a solid. You could imagine that this was ice maybe or steel or any solid you like. Okay, uh, my temperature scale, I purposely haven't put numbers on it so that we can just get the general idea. Okay, so provide my solid with one candle. I burn one candle. I, achieve, I get to this point. The temperature goes up. Okay, I burn another candle. The temperature goes up again. Okay, I burn another candle and the temperature doesn't go up. So I'm going from solid, 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 solid. Suddenly the solid starts to melt and I've got some solid and liquid. Okay, I burn another candle and I get to this point. And again, the temperature hasn't gone up. But I'm getting to the point now where nearly all of the, uh, all of the solid is a liquid. Or has changed state to a liquid. Okay, burn another candle and the temperature starts to go up. So from here to here, we had a change of state. Okay, carry on as uh, normal. Another candle burnt, another temperature rise, another candle burnt, another temperature rise, and we hit another point here. So we've gone from solid to solid and liquid to liquid, and here we're starting to convert the liquid into a gas. And again, no temperature rise, but a continuing changing of state. And finally, we have a gas and we can raise the temperature of the gas with another candle and so on. Okay? So, if you Google define colon latent, I often do this when I'm not sure about a subject. I Google uh, or I, I search um, with the word define colon and the word I'm looking for just to get some dictionary definitions on what the word specifically means. You get latent meaning present or potential but not evident or active. Latent heat, specific latent heat, is the amount of energy required per kilogram of a substance required to change its state. As you noticed here, the heat energy that went in didn't show up in the temperature change. That's why we call it latent, as though it's hidden. Although anything that's hidden isn't hidden to the person who knows where it is. And we know where it is. It goes into um, breaking the bonds or between the uh, molecules in the solid or in the liquid. Okay, so let's have a look at um, the specific latent heat of vaporization for this material. We found that it was two candles per kilogram to convert this from a liquid to a gas. And similarly, to convert this from a solid to a liquid, or from a liquid to a solid, and this works the other way around as well, um, it was two candles per kilogram as well. Obviously, this is just an idealized example, but you get the idea that specific latent heat of whatever we're talking about, fusion or uh, vaporization, is amount of energy per kilogram required to change the state of the substance. Okay. Okay, so let's have a look at how we measure the specific latent heat of fusion for water. We start with similar materials to what we had before uh, when we were looking at specific heat capacity, a power pack, a joule meter or a power meter. Remember that um, we don't always use joule meters, that we can use a power meter, but if we use a power meter, we must use the energy equation to calculate um, sorry, use the power equation rearranged to calculate the energy we put in. So we'd also need to know the time. Okay? We have a thermometer and a heating element. Okay? And what we do is we switch the thing on and when it's switched on we get um, water, uh, we get a change of state, ice being turned into water. Hopefully this ice initially was at zero degrees Celsius as well. Uh, we found that uh, the mass of the beaker beforehand, the new mass of the beaker was 50 grams, and if we use the specific latent heat formula, we can calculate, um, and of course we don't have the, uh, a joule meter, so we need to calculate the energy. 
we can calculate um, specific latent heat of water with this. So the power was 30 watts, 30. The time was five minutes. Uh, five minutes times 60 seconds to get the number of seconds. Divide by the mass of water, which is 50 minus 20, to give us because uh, the mass of the beaker minus the mass of the uh, beaker plus the water um, gives us the mass of the water or the mass of the amount of ice that changed state. Okay, and we get a value 300 joules per gram. Okay, this is all very good, but this isn't the most accurate way of doing it. So we can improve the method by taking two um, blocks of ice, two amounts of ice of the same mass in the same conditions, the same environment, and uh, repeating the experiment. This time, uh, we measure both beakers' mass, their new mass afterwards, uh, subtract them from each other so we can just find the mass of the water. So in this case, 30 grams like before. In this case, 4 grams seem to melt anyway. So now when we calculate our specific latent heat capacity, um, or sorry, specific latent heat, uh, the power and the time are all the same, but the new mass is going to be the mass of the water in this example minus the mass of this one, because this is what would have melted anyway. Uh, in the experiment. So we just want to find out the uh, energy supplied, uh, what that did to the water, to the ice in the water, not what um, the environment did to it. So this allows us to subtract the environmental influences and it allows us to calculate a much more accurate value for the specific latent heat of water. Okay, let's have a look at an exam question. Pause the video and read this question. Okay, if you've read this question, it's very similar to what we just looked at. Uh, we use the specific latent heat capacity question, uh, sorry, equation, because that's what we're being asked for. Um, <coughs> it tells us um, the energy it took to evaporate 15 grams of water, so we're looking at vaporization. Um, it also tells us that the experiment showed 600 joules was lost to the environment, so this is going to have to be subtracted, as this is what's making the uh, experiment less accurate. Um, so we've got energy divided by mass gives us uh, 2,260 joules per gram as our final answer. Okay, pause the video and read this eight mark question. Okay, so if you've read the question, then you may be a little bit confused, but um, I'm sure you can have a go at it. Okay, so it says here, what we're looking at is a student trying to work out um, the latent heat diffusion of ice. And they've added ice at zero degrees Celsius to water at 20 degrees Celsius and they're gonna to want to see the change in temperature of the water and then using specific heat capacity of water probably calculate uh, how much energy uh, was taken from the water to melt the ice. Right, it says here the mass, um, three mass readings are taken, a description of the first reading is given, uh, give descriptions of the other two. So they've taken a reading of the mass of the beaker, the stirrer and the thermometer. Right, what the students actually going to need to know is the mass of the ice and the mass of the water. But that's not the readings they will take. So don't make the mistake of writing those things down. They're going to have to measure the mass of the beaker, stirrer, thermometer, and water, so they can subtract it from this to calculate the mass of the water, and the mass of the beaker, stirrer, thermometer, water, and ice, to subtract it from that num the mass of this thing, uh, to calculate the mass of the ice. That way they can get the value for the mass of ice and mass of water. Sorry, mass of water and mass of ice. Okay, so maybe you need to go through that again, just pause the video, rewind a bit. Okay. Right, write down the word equations the student could use to find. The heat lost by the water as it cools from 20 to 0 degrees Celsius. Okay, so that's just a, a change of temperature, so we're using specific capacity equa uh, equation. And the heat gained by the melting ice. So this is melting ice, this is a change of state. We use specific latent heat equation, rearranged for energy. Okay. Uh, pause the video and read this question. So the student calculated that, calculated that um, the water loses 12,800 joules and that the mass of the ice is 30 grams. Calculate the value for the specific latent heat of ice. Quite easy, just stick the numbers into this formula and you get your answer. Remember, always put the units, joules per gram. State two reasons why this value is only approximate value. Okay. The beaker is not insulated, so heat from the surroundings affect the results. Uh, the beaker, thermometer and stirrer also give heat energy to the ice and this is not accounted for. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've learned something new today.